In this lecture, we will talk about non-covalent interactions, particularly in proteins. If you remember, in our previous lecture, we discussed that amino acids, they are joined together by a peptide bond, which is a type of a covalent bond. We also discussed that peptide backbone is made up of repeating units of NH, CH, CO, where NH represents amino group, C represents alpha carbon, and CO represents carboxyl group. So these repeating units, they join together by a peptide bond and they make a peptide backbone. We have non-covalent interactions in a protein molecule that are very much important in maintaining the three-dimensional structures of proteins. And these non-covalent interactions, they may either be strong are weak however they are quite weak as compared to covalent interactions now what are these different types of non-covalent interactions we will talk about van der Waals interaction or London force we will discuss van der Waals attraction or van der Waals repulsion we will also talk about induced dipole as it is a very important concept to understand these different types of electrostatic interactions we will also discuss salt bridge or ion pair. You know very well that atoms, they either attract or repel each other based on the charges they carry. And finally, we will talk about hydrogen bonding, which is a very common type of non-covalent interaction in biological molecules. Now let's start with Van der Waals interaction or London force. Now, what do you mean by a dipole? Just recall your basic chemistry. So dipole is a base, is a pair of opposite charges that are separated by a distance. For instance, if we have an atom, and that atom, one end of the atom is positively charged, and another is a negatively charged, we call it as a dipole. Now, what do you mean by an induced dipole? <clears throat> Excuse me. So the transient induced dipole is the transient redistribution of electrons on neutral atoms that results in generation of an induced dipole. And it happens when these neutral atoms, they come close to a positive charge, or when these two neutral atoms, they come close to each other. For instance, <clears throat> we have an isolated neutral atom. When this isolated neutral atom come close to a positive charge, now the positive charge will attract the electrons on these neutral atoms toward itself and will, it will push nucleus away. So ultimately, this dipole environment will be created on the neutral atom. It will be quite transient. So this is one scenario. In another instance, if these neutral atoms, they come close together, they again initiate a similar type of induced dipole environment. So these neutral atoms will then start attracting each other because there will be a short transient redistribution of electronic clouds on their surfaces. Now the transient dipoles, they will start attracting each other and we call this attraction as London force or Van der Waals attraction. However, there is one important point in that, that there should be an optimal distance through which they can interact with each other through these Van der Waals interaction. And it has been shown that a distance of three to four angstrom is an optimal distance through which these induced dipoles can interact with each other. And beyond five, five angstrom, they become, the, the, the Wonderwalls interaction becomes negligible. Now what do you mean by Wonderwalls repulsion? So what will be the situation if we bring these induced molecules beyond three angstrom? they will start repelling each other and this is known as van der Waals repulsion. And that repulsion is very much important. The repulsion at these short distances is involved in maintaining the structure of different biological molecules. It creates a sort of a steric effect which induces essential constraints to maintain a particular three-dimensional structures of biological molecules. For instance, 
this van der Waal repulsion prevents RNA from adopting a double helical structure as we see in DNA. So we have another type of non-covalent interaction and that is known as salt bridge or ion pairing. It is one of the common form of electrostatic interaction which is in between oppositely charged atoms or groups of atoms. And this interaction between two oppositely charged groups is known as salt bridge or ion pairing. We know that based on the side chains, amino acids, certain amino acids, they is either positively or negatively charged. For instance, we have an arginine. That arginine has got a side chain which is positively charged and we have another amino acid, glutamate, which has a side chain that is negatively charged. Now these two oppositely charged amino acids can interact with each other through salt bridge or ion pairing if they come close together at an optimal distance of 3 angstrom.